What's up, everybody? Josiah and Seth here from the Geekiverse, and uh, we are actually introducing a, a new feature called Geek Replay. So you may have seen these on a lot of other pop uh, culture websites. But uh, basically, we're going to go back and give our analysis for the Captain America Civil War trailer. Seth, how are you doing today? I'm doing very well. How are you? I know you're not doing well. You don't have to answer I'm, that. I'm a little under the weather, but you know what? I'm pretty. I'm doing better because of this. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I figured. So, yeah. I would. I would. I would be too. Because yeah. the trailer's fantastic. Um. Yeah. Right off the bat here. Uh, I, I. Where do you think this is? First of all, do you have any anticipation or, or idea? Um. It saves many people. As it's tough to say. It, right? I mean, it reminds me of something like the Eastern European Hydra base from uh, Age of Ultron, but you know, I definitely don't think it's. It's probably. I still don't know if this is taking place in present day or if this is a flashback, as we you know can see here that uh, Bucky is in some kind of cryostasis, which is you know probably what's been happening to him for decades when he was the Winter Soldier. Right. So, um... Odds I mean, are this could be a good flashback. That's what I'm thinking. And so perhaps it's somewhere up in the Arctic Circle. Perhaps it's, you know, a Russian facility, I believe, that uh, the uh, gentleman here had some Russian identification down there in the bottom right. Yes, so, absolutely. That, that was my first thought, too, uh, right off the bat. That kind of pointed to Russia. Yeah. So it seems like it would be a flashback. However, the way uh, this is presented to us, it looks like Captain America may be but you don't give up. releasing. You see, it looks like maybe he's right. just released him from the thing, unless this is edited in a misleading way. So maybe after when he was on the run, he got recaptured, and Cap has to go save him. Yeah, there's and there's a lot of that going on in this this trailer overall. I think there's a lot of uh, fancy editing, uh, yeah. which I'll. I'll... <laughs> Bring more attention to okay. as I see it. <laughs> okay, cool. Um, and I really like Cap's uh, opening monologue here. Cap is Cap is definitely one of my one of my guys, one of my one of my comic book heroes. Absolutely, I'm team, team Cap, and I believe you are Team Stark. You know what? It, it, I'm torn, but I, <laughs> if push comes to shove, I'm Team Stark. Okay, all right, whatever. <laughs> so yeah, our typical montage here for a Marvel film. I like this here, that it's no. actually, so they're recapping some of the big events from the past Avengers movies. And in the top right, it tells us how many casualties there were. Yeah. How much collateral it's damage there was for each of the events. Yeah, but I, I just think it's really interesting how this and Batman v Superman, both coming out within a, a month or so of each other, both dealing directly with the issue of collateral damage from previous installments yeah. in the series. So... I wonder how that happened. I don't, I, it's just one of those things, I guess. It's a theme now, right? And we mm. we actually talked about it on one of the episodes of the Geek of Our Show. Like, well, New, New York is a bad place to live. Well, obviously, other places are, it really are bad, is, too. <laughs> especially in the Marvel Universe. Now, that scene right there okay. um, with Ms. Olsen uh, looking mm -hmm. away right after the incident from Age of Ultron, mm -hmm. she, it's it's tough for her to look at, seeing that her, her twin you know, passed away in that, that incident. I yeah. think that's telling, and I love the emotion here, and I love that Steve is kind of saying enough. You know, like, I've seen yeah, enough. One of enough. my team is really feeling the weight of this, mm -hmm. let alone all the casualties, but she has a close personal tie to it. I thought mm -hmm. that that was kind of interesting. Yeah, I, th I really love that uh, Chris Evans' Captain America really balances uh, being a father figure with being uh, with being a warrior, with being a gentleman. He's, he's, he's really everything that I wanted Captain America to be. It's, it's, he's, a, he's a wonderful character. I'm glad, I'm glad he's getting such a spotlight in movies these days. I couldn't agree more. He really is the, one of the main focal points of all these, of, yeah. of the whole MCU to this point, really. Yeah, it's kind of, it was really all about Iron Man, but throughout Phase 2, it's really been transitioning over to Captain America being the, being the frontline guy, so. I couldn't agree more. Yeah. All right. Captain, people so are afraid. So when we get a uh, return of, uh, Thunderbolt Ross here from Incredible Hulk, which is, that was a really cool thing that they did, you know, Incredible Hulk is kind of uh, not really talked about as much. It was it was good, you know, it was a pretty good mm -hmm. early MCU movie, but... Um, it's kind of buried, right? It is kind of buried, like, Ed, there was a fallout with Edward Norton, and, you know, they recast the Hulk and all this stuff. Yeah, unexpected, odd, uh, for sure, to see him in here. I was like, holy crap, where do I remember him from? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, like, oh, oh, the second movie in this MCU, and we're 11 yeah. or 12 movies deep now. Yeah. Um, and I like that move. I love that they're bringing that continuity back. So uh, yeah. to see what role he plays is kind of interesting to me. Yeah. And um, so this appears to be uh, some kind of a, a new attack happening, possibly a, 
uh, I don't know, a terrorist attack or a Hydra attack. I know Hydra's not really a, a formed organization anymore, but it's probably splintered. It's still probably around in some form. And uh, this looks like some, court of, some sort of a political meeting, some kind of a facility like that. I heard and someone mention that they thought it was maybe something United Nations or United Nations-esque. Yeah, it's very possible because um, it's also, it's very possible that what we're seeing here is the death of T'Challa's father, T'Chaka, who, uh, you know, T'Challa, this guy, is the one who will become the Black Panther mm -hmm. um, in an in upcoming M MCU movie. So uh, if his father dies here, that means that his son will become the new Black Panther, and it looks like this is probably how he dies. You know, they're... they're uh, the politicians from Wakanda and uh, fictional nation in Africa. So, um, yeah, that's very likely what's going on here. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. Um, I think that's probably the origin of, of what we're seeing with Black Panther. Yeah, because we'll see a lot of Black Panther. That's why I'm here. So we have Iron Man flying in here. His, uh, speaking up about his viewpoint, you, you wouldn't think looking at the early MCU stuff that Stark would be pro-registration, but... Um, Not at all. But he's I, he's made a series of large mistakes. It it kind of makes a, a degree of sense for him to be for this now because he's uh, you know he's seen firsthand uh, you know when superheroes just do something that they think will be a good idea, it could have grave consequences like Ultron. Totally. Yeah. I think that's what this harks back to is his failed experiment with Ultron. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I love this shot cinematically. I think uh -huh. that is, is gorgeous. We yeah. got a little bit of new technology with the new suit there as well. Yeah, the Mark. Uh, what number are we on? 46? <laughs> what is uh, that? I remember the, nom the nom Roman numeral is, uh, I think, XLVI. What is that? XLVI. Is that, is that 46? Yeah, is I think that that's 46. 46. Okay. So that would be right. <laughs> okay. That's good. So, we there he goes. Check. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of a lot of tried and true looks on these faces. Sorry, a lot of concern from all the our heroes yeah, here. Yeah, that's what that's what uh, Emily said. Is that this uh, trailer fe features a lot of people looking down in concern? Yes. Why wouldn't you? If you were involved in this situation, you totally. would look down in concern as well. Um, so this is possibly MCU's version of the Raft, the supervillain prison from the comics. It looks like this is a. I feel like it's implying that this is a newly built facility that Tony Stark is was involved with building. It looks like maybe he's not proud of it. He looks like he has some regret on his face, but it looks like this was, you know, partially a product of his engineering, so. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Something that had to happen. Yeah. Point Which is, is probably is another sticking away. point, uh, you know, that comes between him and Steve, you know. Steve is, I'm sure, you know, if, if it's some, some sort of facility for, uh, keeping super-powered individuals that don't comply with registration, you know, yeah. Steve would, that would be another thing that would just uh, uh, drive a wedge between uh, Steve and Tony. It looks like there's a lot of negotiating, a lot of, a lot of discussion between these two, if this trailer is any indication coming in the movie. Uh, obviously, we're going to see our fair share of action. Uh, it is a Marvel movie, but that being said, I think we're going to see a lot, of, a lot of emotion that we haven't felt uh, maybe necessarily in in these movies. And um, I saw it pointed out that um, it seems to be sort of an unofficial running theme in, in MCU movies that if you're uh, if you're wearing a suit vest like Tony Stark is here, that uh -huh. means you are the villain. It happened with <laughs> Ob uh, I don't know about Obadiah Stane, but Justin Hammer. No, I'm confident. Um, Alexander Pierce from Winter Soldier. Yeah, yeah. So you, we, you think we're painting Iron Man as the villain in this movie? Well, which is interesting to me because I think that. They want conflict. I think they want... I think they do. I think that... Um, yeah, yeah. I, I, it's probably not an intentional thing. It's probably just a, a funny thing that people pointed out. But um, I, I do think that they might fall into the trap of uh, not being able to... Th th like, inevitably, Steve will look like the hero and Tony will look like the villain just based on the fact that it's a Captain America movie. Um, yeah. Even though... But I do think they want to build up... Um, the, you know, e either party could be right kind of a thing. We have yet to see how well that will play out, but... Yeah, I mean, it, it can only be good for fans to pick sides in this. <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> course, <laughs> yeah. This is the year of picking sides and the year of collateral damage yes. responsibility. Perfect. All right, so we got a glimpse of this in the last trailer. This is a chase through a subway tunnel. Black Panther, there he is right there, is chasing Bucky on a motorcycle, and Looks Cap so cool. is chasing Black Panther, slashes the tire, and down he goes. Uh, yeah, so, 
And we'll see some conflict between uh, Winter Soldier and Black Panther later on in the trailer as well, but um, it seems like a lot of people are trying to get at the Winter Soldier. His hands are and still around. understandably so, because he's trying to kill Tony Stark, and he came very close to doing so. Um, that's it crazy. Is, I mean, that tells you right there how intense this really is. Well, I mean, first of all, that's an awesome new bit of technology right there. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's I, really I cool. love any watch-associated technology, Dick Tracy, two-way communicators, and, and, and smart watches, anything like that, I think is just so cool. And having totally. just, like, this one just little armored hand that thing that can come out of your watches uh, is, is a great new idea, and... Uh, Nearly saves Tony's life. Oh like my gosh. I mean, that tells you, like I said, how serious this is. He's trying to kill Tony Stark there. Like, for better or worse, we don't know what's going on totally yeah. with Bucky in this this film. And maybe mm -hmm. he's the uh, part of the reason that uh, this, this act is, is coming to be. But seeing mm -hmm. him almost do that, and you can even see right on Tony's face right there. Like, he looks surprised, genuinely. Yeah, like he didn't expect things to get so crazy. Like, even he's maybe not prepared for how brutal this conflict is going to get in this movie. Unreal. Yeah. I think really? some clever editing right there. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, he is not shooting Rhodes No, there. he is not. No, he right. is, like, in a possibly an indoor location at night. Uh, and he, and he fires. And yeah, so it, Bucky, at least not in that shot, is the one that causes... Uh, War Machine's arc reactor to be hit. Um, it almost looks like something from a plane or <laughs> another one of the mechs. You know, like, that, it just doesn't look like it would be from there. And we don't know 100% what's going on in this scene yet. Also, you don't uh, you don't think Rhodes dies there, do you? I, I think he very well could. I, I mean, don't think they could show that on, on a trailer. I just don't. I think he's probably badly hurt, and that may spiral Tony into more of a... Uh, more of the conflict here, but I just don't, I don't know. I don't think that they can show him dying in the trailer. I mean, it would make, I mean, they totally could do it. Like, I mean, I think, you know, even Tony Stark's days are numbered in the MCU just because of, you know, uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s, you know, his, his, it's, it's, come, it's come around to that time. I don't know how many more movies he's contracted for, and uh, so I feel like, you know, if, yeah. if Stark's going to exit soon, it could very well happen with Rhodey. But, yeah, you make a very good point that they probably wouldn't show that in the trailer unless there's... Got to be a lot more death, and this is only the tip of the iceberg. That's possible. It's very possible. Yeah. This is all leading up to Infinity oh, Wars, world. big time. Oh yeah, yeah. So. All right. So. Okay. We got Widow, Widow taking on some people. We got. I'm not the one that needs her, to watch. She's on Team Stark, so she is. They're back. Kind of. That's an interesting conversation there. Yeah. Seeing that she's on his side, but kind of telling each other to, you know, hey, watch your back, buddy, kind of thing. Okay. Now. Do you think maybe this could be, I mean, this could be anything, but I've heard it said that maybe this is Peter Parker's house. That's what I heard as well. Yeah. Um, that is, well, they were thinking maybe that or maybe um, a possibly Hawkeye's home, but if you look in the window there, it kind of almost, it, it looks like it's in a city environment. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't look like there's like, remodeling or anything happening. Yeah. It looks like, you know, there's... There's tile chipped on the wall and the newspapers. It looks like they're just a, a low-income family. So right. it could very well be, uh, yeah, Peter. I, you know, I would, I would think that that's Peter Parker's. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I knew he was gonna. You know, we know that Peter Parker's gonna have some correspondence with Tony Stark in this movie, but um, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't anticipating Cap to. Uh, get involved with Peter as well. Although I'd love to see that. Well, that's the thing. Like that's the thing that's holding me up here. Uh, is that why? Why would Cap be talking to him? It seems like almost at the end of this trailer, when when Spidey is revealed, that Iron Man brings him out of nowhere. Uh, yeah, almost. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so I don't know. It's it's really uh, yeah. From what I've heard, Spider Man is kind of Team Stark uh, in this movie. Although I don't know. It seems like um, there's a lot that him and Cap ha have in common. They have very similar earnest uh do good do good or spirit so it seems like maybe after maybe they after they have that conflict that we glimpse at the end of the trailer then cap talks to peter and kind of uh changes his mind or who knows yeah um, that is probably the thing that i'm most interested in seeing here i would love this... to see a heart to heart between cap and spidey yeah <laughs> yes <laughs> real grumpy geek's favorite character is spider-man in, in the mcu also so uh, that, that will certainly be something to look out for yeah fight tony and so Tony, uh, they have a conflict that I think might be towards the end of the movie. Uh, you know, this is probably after they've had a battle or two. Um, you know, t Tony had the same bruising. 
on his eye. Uh, um, he just looks like he's had enough. Of, of yeah, I mean, it looks like you know, you know, possibly you know, Rhodey did die. If if Rhodey, uh, you know, or if Rhodey got seriously hurt, it looks like Tony is is hurt, is burdened, and is just not taken crap from anyone. Not even Captain America. There he oh, goes. Oh, jeez. Now, I'm very interested in what is the situation is here. I thought on the right over here in this chamber that was Bucky. That looks like Bucky. It has his long hair. Um, I thought he was maybe Tony was trying to capture him or kill him or something, but Bucky is uh, just behind, popping out behind the chamber over there. So, yeah. you know, who is in that chamber? I thought maybe it could be the could be Baron Zemo. We, we haven't seen him yet. We know he's in the movie and he's played by Daniel Brühl, but we have no idea anything about his involvement or what he looks like or anything. Um, Odd that we haven't really found out more about that, I think. I like that they, they've kept it close to the chest, though, because yeah. the movies just reveal so much these days. Mm -hmm. You know, I think Batman versus Superman is maybe a prime example. Just We know basically everyone in this movie. You know, mm -hmm. It would be nice to see some, some surprise pop-ins. Yeah, yeah. So in not knowing how Baron Zemo is working, you know, possibly he's working behind the scenes. Maybe he's orchestrating this entire Civil War, uh, which would be very interesting. Oh, I um, can see that. Yeah. So, I'm yeah, there. This might be, this might be uh, towards the end of the movie here, but... Uh, you right, just started a war! Things fire up. And just get a whole series of heavy. Black Panther and Bucky going at it. Um, and then Black Panther, of course, with his vibranium armor. He's... Let me go back to that there. He's, you know, Wakanda, like, harvests vibranium. That's where vibranium comes from. So that's, you know, Black Panther, one of Black Panther's things is he has an all-vibranium suit, and this high-caliber gunfire from an attack chopper is doing nothing. He's just standing there. <laughs> it's uh, so cool. I yeah. love what they've done with Black Panther's look. Yeah. Like, at first I was a little skeptical how they were going to pull this off, but he looks awesome. Yeah. He and really the does. way he fights is totally feline esque. <laughs> it is. It is. Like, yeah, yeah. He's kind of has this. Yeah, like he's he, ready to pounce, right? Yeah, he has. He does look. It looks feline esque, like you <laughs> say. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's uh, very crazy. Yeah, because the vision was really uh, was like this spectral, like you know, sort of like all powerful character in Age of Ultron as he is in the comics. But Scarlet Witch is somehow constraining him here, which is. Very interesting. Maybe shows her power or shows his, his weakness. Maybe, yeah. maybe both. Uh, yeah, so. possibly. I've heard that Scarlet Witch's powers are really going to be uh, pushed to their limits in this movie, so we're yeah. really going to get a better idea of what she can do, and yeah, this is pretty amazing to see right there. And we get Hawkeye firing an arrow with Ant-Man on it, dives in the battle. That's a classic image from the comics that looks fantastic here on film. Yeah. Uh, that's really great to see. Great, great to, see, to tie everyone in here. Great to see Ant-Man involved as well. And I'm glad to see him on Team Cap as well. I'm looking forward to seeing Paul Rudd's uh, Scott Lang interact with, with Steve Rogers. I'm excited um, to see him interact with anyone on the yeah. Avengers. Cause <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's such a goofball. He is a goofball. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be great. And... Uh, we get another appearance uh, from Crossbones, uh, Frank Grillo's uh, Brock Rumlow. Uh, so uh, he was a, a secret Hydra, Hydra agent in Winter Soldier, and now he's come back in his kind of comic book-like appearance as this armored, badass mercenary villain here. Yeah. He looks like he's got some like hydraulic-powered uh, fists going on there. Um, he, you know, in the in the comics version of Civil War, isn't he really instrumental in having just a horrible world events be set off, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, so... He looks totally like Black Mask from the Batman Arkham video games to me. If you see Black a little Ma bit... Oh, yeah? A little Mask? bit of a rendition there. Uh, huh. Take take a look, folks, if you'll see what I'm saying. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Specifically, Arkham Origins, which is probably why you're questioning it, because nobody played Arkham Origins, because <laughs> it was not a good game compared to the rest. So, okay. <laughs> anyway. Well, anyway, here we go. Uh, Stay down. And Final warning. I could do this all day. I love, I love that they brought back that line. I love... Uh, right from the first Avenger. Yeah, absolutely. I, I love that they brought that back. Shows his growth, right? Yeah, Steve is still who he was. I really, um, I, I, I like characters like Steve Rogers who, um, you know, it's great when characters have story arcs that change, but um, Steve Rogers is one of those characters that kind of just 
stays the same in, uh, for the most part. He endures what's going on around him, and uh, that ca that character really uh, j just shines through the circumstances. And he's still he's still that same kid he was in the '40s, and uh, that's really great to see. You know, even when he's a superhero, he's still kind of an underdog. And uh, and we get a second. This is different. There was a previous. Uh, battle between all these guys that they showed at their upstate New York facility, um, but this is at an airport, and uh, any, have you heard anything about what maybe kind of context is going on here? I've got nothing on this at all. Uh, no no direction. I, You know, you saw the upstate New York one, which is not terribly far from where we're located here in that's, Buffalo. That's right, yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe Who knows this is, that could be? Yeah. You know, yeah. Buffalo, Niagara Airport, and they just <laughs> want to go on vacation. <laughs> They, I know that the Turtles filmed in Buffalo for their new movie, and uh, right. I haven't heard about Captain America filming here, but Might have been I, secret. I don't will know. tell myself that that is what happened. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> would have been hard for them to keep that a secret. Yeah, <laughs> on the I airport. think so too. <laughs> All right. So here we go. This is this is the thing. This is one of the, you know, this is really the big talking point here. What we've all been waiting for. He affectionately calls out Underoos. There we go. MCU's own Spider-Man. Hey, everyone. Oh, uh, man. I love this reveal so much. I'm glad they did it. I was worried they weren't going to put him in any trailers. And I love the way Rogers calls him in, kind of like, or uh, excuse me, Stark calls him in like he's his, his little <laughs> apprentice. Like, hey, yeah. kid, go get me a glass of water, you know? Yeah. I love it. Go get Cap Shield, basically. Yeah. Uh, what do you think of the suit? I personally, I know there's a lot of discussion about it. There's a lot of back and forth. I really like the suit. I... You know, there's really only so much you can change Spider-Man's suit without it looking, like, too weird and crazy. You know, like, the first Amazing Spider-Man was, like, it, it took some, you know, some funky uh, design uh, design cues, and which I didn't totally hate. You know, it was Spider-Man's first costume in that movie. And yeah. So he had yellow lenses. He had this weird, like, kind of elong elongated uh, visual design. But this looks less sleek. It looks a little, like... Uh, there's like more bulkiness to like the, the spider logo it does, and, and to his eyes. I really like it. It really reminds me of uh, like the 1960s Spider-Man look. Yeah. Um, we have some kind of interesting trim going on in the, the arms and legs. I really think that they, they've come up with a really cool design that um, is, uh, yeah, really changes it up from what we've seen before while still keeping it very much a, a great Spider-Man outfit. A great kind of 2D look to it all, if that so, makes sense. It really pops out with the color to me. I really like the way the suit looked. First time I saw it, I was like, eh. And then I watched it a second time, and I forgot immediately my first reaction because I just I, I love how it looks. Yeah. I think, um, and with the eyes we referenced a little bit, uh, yes. A little bit of what Deadpool had going on, where he could Emotive control eyes. it. Yeah. Know? Although, uh, I think there's probably going to be a technical explanation to it. Me and uh, myself and Beta mm -hmm. uh, were uh, talking about this, and um, yeah, there's uh, it, it, there's a good chance that um, he gets this suit from Tony Stark. I've heard a lot that... Same. that yeah, that uh, I thought it was going to be like an Iron Spider kind of a suit, but you know, it was probably this suit. Maybe the first time we see Spider-Man, he's in kind of a makeshift homemade kind of a thing. Uh, but then he gets his classic suit from from Tony, and uh, if I can get to the uh, the shield the shield uh, retrieval here. So okay, yeah, and then just uh, this little shot of uh, Spider-Man's back, we have the kind of bulky red Spider-Man logo, another kind of '60s-ish motif. And uh, so I before this, I did not want another Spider-Man reboot because I I assume that's coming. I know it's been in talks, and they haven't formally. I believe announced it yet. But uh, they may have. As far okay. as I know, it's it's slated for 2017. They've got a director. I heard that as well. Yeah, there's casting happening. Okay. Uh, so it is happening. Yeah. Uh, I'm all about it now. I, yeah. Just from this little this little still, and that's the power <laughs> of like Marvel marketing. Yeah, it's, it's crazy. Yeah, I, I was never too against the the you know you know when when they rebooted it with Amazing Spider-Man after the Raimi movies. I was never really very against it. I thought, you know, they they had a the, they had a nice series with the old ones. Now we get to, you know, we have like an immediate reboot and like like in comics, you just get you know, it's just relaunched and you get a new version of the character right away. I don't think that's such a bad thing. Um although it did seem like a little much at first. Um yeah. after the Amazing Spider-Man movies and then this, but I mean, it's it does make a lot of sense because and I think people forgave that pr pretty quickly because this is finally the MCU Spider-Man. People have wanted this for so long, so it's really kind of like uh, a justified restart. I'm with you there. I'm, I'm all on board. Let's yeah. do it. All right. So that'll do it. Yeah. Okay. We uh, 
Thanks for watching, folks. Definitely yeah, want to hear you. your comments below, but this will be a recurring segment. Um, I don't know, uh, next big trailer, we're thinking maybe Rogue One. We have no idea about that, though. Possibly, yeah. I'm guessing there will be... I mean, this movie's coming out in uh, a couple months, I believe, and um, less than two months, and... Um, you know, uh, there should be one more trailer. You know, typically, you know, big movies have like uh, three full-length trailers, so I'm expecting one more from this. Um, but yeah, Rogue One might be the next uh, big one that we get. Uh, yeah. Possibly X-Men. Oh, um, possibly. So we'll be back next time for Seth. I'm Josiah. Thanks for watching.